In this video, we will learn about the confusion matrix as a metric for evaluating artificial intelligence classification models, and we will take a look at the coding file directly. So far, the performance of artificial intelligence classification models has been evaluated using accuracy, which represents the correctness of the predictions. The confusion matrix is another metric used to assess the performance of AI classification models, along with accuracy. It allows for a more in-depth analysis of the model's performance by presenting the predicted results in a tabular format. The confusion matrix is a two-dimensional table where the rows represent the actual classes and the columns represent the predicted classes by the model or vice versa. The diagonal represents the correctly classified observations, while the off-diagonal elements represent the incorrectly classified observations. In this case, when we have four classes, a, B, C, and D, the table shows how well the model predicts each class. For example, it predicts A eight times, out of which six are correct, one is predicted as B, and one is predicted as D. Similarly, for class B, it predicts it eight times, out of which five are correct, three are incorrectly predicted as A, and two are incorrectly predicted as D. This slide presents the confusion matrix for both the cases of balanced and imbalanced data. In the case where we have an equal number of instances for classes A, B, C, and D, the accuracy for the top model is 0.675, while the accuracy for the bottom model is 0.625. We can consider the top model with higher accuracy as a better model. On the other hand, let's examine the case of imbalanced data. For model 1, the accuracy is 0.5, while for Model 2, the accuracy is 0.87. Can we say that Model 2 is the better model based on the accuracy? In the case of Model 1, although the accuracy is low, it is reasonably accurate for classes B, C, and D. However, for Model 2, it is only accurate for class A and has low accuracy for the remaining classes B, C, and D. In other words, Model 2 tends to predict almost everything as Class A. In such cases, relying solely on accuracy for evaluation is not sufficient, and other evaluation metrics are required. If we take a closer look at the confusion matrix, when we predict yes or positive in response to the question of whether a specific class is correct, that is, the prediction matches the actual value being yes or positive, it is called a true positive, TP and this corresponds to the diagonal area of the matrix. In other words, it represents the cases where we predicted yes, it is A when asked, is it A? And the actual value is also A. On the other hand, when we predict no or negative in response to the question of whether a specific class is correct, but the actual value turns out to be yes or positive, it is called a false negative, Fn. It represents the cases where we predicted it is not A, but the actual value is A, indicating that the prediction was incorrect. False positive refers to the case where we predict a specific class to be correct, but it turns out to be incorrect. For example, if we predict it as A, but the actual value is not A, it is considered a false positive. If we take the case of class B, when we predict it as B, but it is actually not B, it would be represented in yellow. Lastly, true negative represents the case where we predict a specific class to be negative, and it turns out to be negative in reality. For instance, if we predict it as not A, and the actual value is also not A, it is considered a true negative. Similarly, for class B, true negative can be represented in color. Likewise, it would be good for you to think about true negatives for classes C and D using the same approach. Based on the concepts of true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative mentioned so far, we can calculate the following values. Firstly, accuracy represents the ratio of correctly predicted instances out of the total, which means the fractions of the diagonal elements of the confusion matrix. Recall, refers to the ratio of true positive to the sum of true positive and false negative. It indicates how well the classification model detects it, given a class. Precision, on the other hand, represents the ratio of true positive to the sum of true positive and false positive. It measures, given a class prediction from the model, how likely it is to be correct. 
Before discussing the F1 score, let's talk about arithmetic mean and harmonic mean. Arithmetic mean is obtained by summing up the numbers and dividing by the total count, while the harmonic mean is obtained by taking the reciprocals of the numbers, computing their arithmetic mean, and then taking the reciprocal of that mean. When there are extreme values, the arithmetic mean is heavily influenced, and its meaning as an average becomes weak. On the other hand, the harmonic mean penalizes the larger values. Now, the F1 score is calculated through the harmonic mean of recall and precision. Recall and precision have a trade-off relationship, which means that when one increases, the other decreases. Therefore, it is important to find a point where recall and precision harmonize. As mentioned, the F1 score is the harmonic mean of recall and precision. To calculate it, you multiply the product of recall and precision by 2, and then divide it by the sum of recall and precision. Ultimately, the F1 score is an evaluation metric that can be used to assess models with imbalanced data. This slide demonstrates the process of calculating precision, recall, and F1 score from the confusion matrix. To put it briefly, for each class A, B, C, and D, we count the frequencies of true positive and false positive, and calculate precision based on these values. Similarly, we count the frequencies of true positive and false negative for each class and calculate recall. Then, we calculate the average values of precision and recall, and by taking their harmonic mean, we obtain an F1 score of 0.5. Therefore, when applying accuracy and F1 score to the two models, we can observe that Model 2 has a higher accuracy of 0.87, but Model 1 has a higher F1 score of 0.5. As mentioned earlier, Model 2 predicts only Class A, while Model 1 predicts reasonably well for Classes B, C, and D as well. This is why Model 1 has a higher F1 score. Consequently, for balanced datasets where the class distribution is similar, accuracy can be used as an evaluation metric. On the other hand, for imbalanced datasets, F1 score can be a suitable evaluation metric. Now, let's implement the code to create a model using the support vector machine algorithm for classifying iris data and calculate the confusion matrix to obtain the F1 score. The Jupyter Notebook file is available on GitHub for you to download and run. First, import the necessary libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, and TrainTestSplit. Then, Load the dataset from an Excel file. Next, assign X and Y variables to the features and labels respectively. Split the data into training and testing datasets with an 80-20 ratio. To build the support vector machine model, import the SVC library. Create an SVM model with a linear kernel, C value of 10, and gamma value of 1, and store it in the SVM variable. Next, train the model using the X training and Y training data and evaluate its accuracy. The accuracy is calculated for the training data and is found to be 97.5%. When the model is applied to the testing data, the accuracy is 0.967, indicating that the model correctly predicts the iris species with an accuracy of 96.7%. To create a confusion matrix and calculate the F1 score based on the results obtained so far, import the confusion underscore matrix and classification underscore report libraries. First, store the actual and predicted iris species results in the actual and pred variables as arrays. Then, create the confusion matrix using these variables. The confusion matrix will be displayed as the output. Additionally, input the names of the three iris species. Satosa, Versicolor, and Virginica, and execute the classification underscore report command. This will provide the precision and recall values for each species, as well as the overall accuracy and F1 score. If you want to apply this to other artificial intelligence classification models used so far, you can connect them in the same way.